back. Um, Doc Nation, the fourth Tuesday of every month, yep. we have an episode for you. Um, our episode today is No Doctors Allowed. Um, physicians need to take control of medical politics. Um, before we dive into that, though, I do want to um, kind of talk to you a little bit, Reed. Uh, our last episode that was got a lot <laughs> of great feedback. Yeah, members, calls, emails. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, you know, we actually got accepted into a couple <clears throat> significant, uh, and I just learned this today. Um, significant groups, uh, one being a, a significant Facebook group with thousands and thousands of uh, members in the group. And, you know, there was some, maybe some controversial or some just really energetic topics that we talked about last week. And um, the truth is, is that, you know, I think someone says, this is just a gripe session. I love that. I love that kind of commentary. We invite that throughout the, throughout the webinar here. Um, yeah, we're, there, there's a lot of things that we're upset about. That's the truth. That's the truth. And we're going to continue to talk about those and build plans around those. We are working 24-7 around the clock to um, build a strategy that best fits uh, our clientele. And so um, there are a lot of things that we need to, to adjust. Um, and so, you know, medicine has been done a certain way for a very, very long time. And a lot of good things about it, a lot of good things. But for the star player, the physician, it's become very, very unfair. And so, uh, yeah, that it was, a, it was a great webinar. We've had tons and tons of feedback. If there are, ha, is anybody who has reached out and we haven't gotten to you immediately, understand that uh, it's like a floodgate opening. So we are working around the clock to, to get to everyone. So uh, thanks, Neil. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a, a proud, proud moment for Doc Nation to be able to serve and help in those in that way. Your your voice matters. Um, you email us, contact us. Your membership matters even more. Um, yeah. So we um, we will have strength in numbers and and continue to to take on uh, some of these issues here and fight for you. Tonight is about again the doctors here. Um, in particularly medical politics. Justin, the, the graphic was awesome. It was like, no doctors allowed. And sometimes it feels that way, right? And like, how did these things happen? Certainly it wouldn't come down to doctors if doctors were in control. Yeah, right? Why is all this decision-making happening without doctors' input? They're being left out of the equation and that needs to stop now. Right, absolutely. So that when you came up with this topic and we're like, we, you know, Doc Nation is about advocacy. We want to lobby. We want to fight for doctors. I um, thought of the best special guest for us here. Um, even Dr. Rafrida uh, suggested that we bring on Dr. John, the Honorable Dr. John Prinskis here with us. Um, and he's become a, a good friend of mine. I'm going to try to do you justice here, Dr. Mm -hmm. Prinskis, with, a, with an introduction here. But um, it's like, the most interesting man in the world, the most interesting doctor in the world to me. So um, we're going to start off with the, the medical director and principal of DXTX Pain and Spine, which has now 50 locations over eight states, and they saw 275,000 patients um, last year. Uh, Co-founder of Illinois Pain and Spine Institute with his spouse, uh, Dr. Terry Dallas. Um, former presidential appointee advising administration of two U.S. presidents on issues pertaining to health care, three four-year terms representing near um, 9,000 Lithuanian Americans in Parliament of Lithuania, um, clinical professor of Chicago Med School, currently advising over 20 U.S. governors. Um, also co-author of national guidelines for how pain should be diagnosed and treated. Um, those guidelines can be found in HHS Best Practices Pain Task Force Final Report, which was endorsed by every single US medical specialty society as the way pain should be diagnosed and treated in the United States. I know that was a lot and, and I'm, it's <laughs> probably missed something there. 
but I couldn't think of a better person to come join us today and talk about this. Um, doctors need a voice. Uh, so, I mean, we don't back down at Doc Nation. Sometimes we're a little provocative, but we're gonna punch right into it. Um, why don't doctors advocate? Can we start there? Sure. So thanks for that. Thanks for that great introduction. Um, there's actually not 9,000 Lithuanian Americans in the United States. There's 900,000. What's a couple zeros <laughs> amongst them? My apologies. I'm missing some zeros. <laughs> Come on, it is a small, it's a small country. It's not that small. <laughs> well, the, uh, your, your introduction was a book, so we got to give Neil some credit. Yeah. No, Neil, Neil did a great job. And I'm honored, I'm humbled, I'm privileged to speak uh, before your group. And uh, uh, I'll be happy to answer any and all questions you have. Uh, so your first question was, why don't doctors get involved more in the political process, perhaps? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, they should. Uh, there, there are a couple barriers to that right now. Uh, one actually is a result of the Affordable Care Act, because that's led to the employment of the majority now of physicians in the United States are employed by hospital systems. So they have concerns about speaking out and and then concerns about getting their contracts terminated, you know, without cause as a result of them being outspoken on issue. And that I think is tragic because that's not only on the political arena, but that's also in pa the patient care arena as well. Um, and as far as uh, even, but before the Affordable Care Act, I, I, I can't uh, just totally fault that um, or Obamacare, some people, uh, I didn't see a lot of physicians active in the process, and I'm not sure why that was uh, and why that isn't, because uh, there are organizations that are extremely active in Washington and in local politics. In no particular order, for example, uh, the hospitals, the, the American Hospital Association, the state, they're, they're super active. Um, for the pharmaceutical industry, super active in lobbying. Uh, the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists, super active. And, and why doctors haven't glommed on um, is, is not clear to me, but it is a fact. And also, uh, um, you know, along with these organizations, they are spending a tremendous amount of uh, money um, in donations to political parties, candidates, et cetera, and uh, doctors uh, have not traditionally done that. And perhaps that's why we saw the physicians got a 4.2% pay cut this year and arguably the highest levels of inflation in, in, a, in a generation or more, whereas hospitals got a, a pay hike. So um, uh, it is important, very important, if you're, if you're going to complain about a pay cut or but complain about anything and you're not involved in the political process, you have to wonder, well, well, what result did you think you were going to get if you were not involved? You know, if a patient has a disease, what effect did you think you were going to have if you decided not to see that patient? You know, so. Yeah, I, I, compl I completely agree. Guys, I'm, um, Justin Reed, please help me with some of the questions that are coming in. I'm ready to jump in. Let me, let me, let, I'm ready to jump in. Let me jump in and say something. We bring John on, um, not just for viewing pleasure tonight. The goal of Doc Nation is to link arms with people of influence uh, because uh, the great goal of Doc Nation is to uh, potentially create a union where now you're not just receiving 9% of the pie that's generated from this industry, but much more. And furthermore, we, we we're looking for autonomy, freedom. When you are the most educated person in the room, you should be able to see a patient for as long as you want to see them and how you want to see them, right? And so that's a trickle down effect to us going to Capitol Hill. There, there's work that we need to do politically 
which is what the membership fee goes to. 100% of that goes to, 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 to our work on Capitol Hill. So what are we doing behind the scenes? We're trying to figure out and make connections with people and build relationships with people like John, because we are, Doc Nation is going to be the political advocate. We, we're not looking around anywhere else anymore. We are going to be the political political advocate to go change what this landscape looks like. And so um, I just had to jump in and say that uh, John, John not, is not only uh, uh, here to, to, to drop some knowledge on us, but a, a friend of ours and, and someone who we're going to, to ask to help us open doors, to make, to, to help us um, get to places we couldn't get on our own. It maybe take us a lot longer. So the goal is to link arms, to build strength. Absolutely. It's a, good, it's a great thing. You know, there are other, there are organizations that have been around. Uh, one that is advocating for physicians is the American Academy of Physicians and Surgeons. And so they're focused on preservation of private practice. That's a good organization. Um, the, uh, but as I said, the, the, the bottom line is, uh, have, you know, having spent time as, as an elected official, as elected official, you need reliable sources that you can go to or someone who can find them. And so uh, it's not just on Capitol Hill where, where it's important you can develop a rapport with your state congressman That's right. uh, and a little bit harder, of course, with your senator, but, but the governors too. So right now, governors control Medicaid dollars, okay? So it's not... so especially in, um, in, in certain specialties such as mine, which is interventional pain, there's an opioid crisis. So what I'm explaining to, to multiple governors, and, and when I say governors, the governor will, will, will direct you to their chief of staff, will might direct you to their medical team, which is all where you wanna be because the governors have so much to do. They're, they're CEOs of these massive corporations called states. And so they'd have an awareness of an issue, and then they will they will direct you immediately. You hope they direct you to their chief of staff, to their chief medical officer. So one of the things I'm working on with governors in multiple states, and I'm giving a major presentation to them. I can't remember if it's in May or or or, or June or July or something, but it's to uh, with regards to the opioid crisis. Um, to enhance the reimbursement for interventional pain procedures, because if you fix the source of someone's pain, you don't have to put them on opioid narcotics. And uh, just as there is a carve out for obstetrical care, because no one wants a bad baby, so th there are carve outs for Medicaid payment, um, there should be for interventional pain procedures, again, that successfully diagnose and treat a painful condition, so either a patient doesn't have to go on opioids or is it a reduced dose? This is, this is an example of how on a governmental level, they can, governors control Medicaid dollars, develop a rapport with them. On the federal level, again, people are looking for reliable sources of information. And uh, it, the time to approach uh, any elected official is when. Is now. it when you need them? Right. It's mm -hmm. when you don't need them. That's right. It's when, and when, and actually, when they need you is is the best, and and how do you know when they need you? You introduce yourself to them. You ask for a meeting. You ask them what's important to you. What's important to you right now? Where do you need support? And it's of course always better to you know make a donation to your candidate as well. I mean that's in better or worse. That's a political system. So you can open more doors with a check and being reliable than just being reliable. But the time to to reach out to uh, an elected official is when you don't need them. Of course, if, if something really happens, you need them, reach out to them. But the time, as you said, is now. You, you, you may, and you have a, a lot of great experience um, and you're well connected. You make that sound so easy to just, is it? So would that be intimidating? At well, all? you know, you have to, um, you, you have to practice, well, I think, you have to practice at it and, and you have to be somewhat of an extrovert. I mean, if you're an introvert, this is not your role. So if you're an introvert, then you, you might be in a supportive role for, you know, the physician who's more outgoing, but you have, you have to, you have to take a risk. Um, 
of reaching out. You have to take a risk of being brushed off. Um, you have to prepare for being awestruck. You know, oh my gosh, that's the president of the United States. He's the most powerful man in the world. He's two feet away from me getting a picture with me. You know, th these are powerful moments. And uh, but so you have to prepare for those and you have to build up for them. And so um, uh, it, it's a certain personality type. That's right. That's right. I love that. Desire. I love that you said. I love that you said that. I don't mean to cut you off, but this is the, for the doctors who think that this is intimidating. That maybe don't have the personality type. Maybe want to be in a supportive role. That's why. That's how you have. That's why you have Doc Nation. That's right. I, I wanted to. I wanted to chime in here and say that we're not asking 500 doctors to go do this individually. I, I have had back-to-back -back meetings uh, ever since we started this. And two of the meetings that I had, I said, you are the perfect candidate to come help us, right? So I'm actively recruiting people to go lobby with us. I had two people this week who I invited to become a part of the Doc Nation internal team to go. To, I'm looking for more. This is a this is this is not just some company that is trying to grow the company. We are trying to change the landscape of medicine and how decisions are made. They're made without the people who should be making them. And we're looking for those changes. So what John explains there, it, and he does it so, so quite frankly, casually, because it's in his personality. He has a lot of experience doing that. But 95% of people don't want to do that. They're not going to do that, which brings us to this point right here. Doc Nation is not the group to <clears throat> sign me up from, cool, uh, Doc, Doc Nation became the group that said, we are not looking around to anybody else anymore. We're going to be the change. And we do expect people to jump on board to help us be that change. So I love how John is just, John's like, this is just who I am. This is just my life's work. This is, it's no problem. Just, you got to practice it and it's got to be a per, but, but what he just said in terms of going to meet with this person, who's going to send you to this person. It's really a cumbersome process. Politics is when you get into it, I have some experience. Justin has some ex experience. It's not, a, it's not a lot of fun. You don't find a lot of friends. And so you have to find way. I mean, John just said donations, right? We want to make donations, but I don't want to be doing individual donations here and here and here. I want to focus our donations where they need to be focused to move because this isn't something that we want. This isn't a goal that we want to have for 10 years. This is something we want to do in the next two, three years. So, um, man, just to hear John's experience and just so casual, it's just like, man, he's been there and done that. But there are very few physicians who have. Well, you, well, you have to understand that. I've, I've built up to this point. Um, I, I was not a good public speaker, uh, and especially, you know, in, initially when I dealt with uh, high level public officials, mm. I would, I would have, you know, certain difficulties because I was in a certain sense in awe of these people. And of course I still am credit where credit is due, yeah. but at the end of the day, they need meaningful information. And so as long as you give them meaningful information and they view you as a resource, you will continue. Uh, you cannot embellish anything. You cannot bend the truth because the minute that happens, you will lose your credibility and you yep. should lose your credibility. Yep. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to uh, leave you with the impression that I've always been this comfortable speaking with heads of state or or high level public officials. It's it's actually just occurred um, through time and just like anything else, you know, repetition. You get more comfortable. And um, I mean, a half an hour ago, I I gave a presentation to a city council meeting, and um, you know, I, it it went well, but. I, I, if it was, you know, 30 years ago, I, I would have been, you know, tachycardic and sweating, you know, so um, now you mentioned unions. So now there already are unions in certain pediatric programs. And, um, and my daughter, for example, she, she's a, uh, she is a resident. Uh, she's in a pediatric program of university center. And so I asked her, I said, you know, I'm not, you know, when I was a resident, uh, we, we certainly didn't have any unions and we certainly had no voice. And uh, she said, well, you know, it might be different because we're residents and 
we don't have a voice and we're employed. I said, well, you kind of hit the nail on the head with what's <laughs> happening in healthcare in the United States. The majority of patients are unemployed and they have gag orders where they can't That's speak right. against their electronic records. So yeah. I asked her about her experience with the union. I said, how do people, how do people view it? And, and, you know, is it adversarial and what types of things do you, you know, are discussed? And she says, no, it's really not adversarial. It's, 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 you know, there's, uh, but if, if a, a resident physician feels that uh, perhaps something in their contract um, has not been followed, they can uh, bring it up to the person who um, is involved in that, or they can bring it to their union rep, who is not a 450 pound former pro wrestler who, you know, is chomping a cigar and then intimidating someone, the, the, the rep then says, okay, I get the problem. Let me go discuss it with the administrator. And, and, and I said, is it ever adversarial? And, and, and she said, no. And I said, well, you know, you know what? And so it seemed like for the, for in her program, it seemed like um, it was a good thing. I, you know, I don't know how that might translate, but um, you know, maybe we can learn something from these residency programs that where the residents are unionized and uh, seems to be working. John, I think can you speak to the the reliable. Well, let, 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 let Justin. Justin has a question. I want yeah, to hear. So, so quick. the reliable sources of information that these these leaders, these these people who are in places of they've got pull, they've got clout. What, can you give us some examples of what information they're missing from the doctor community that if they had it, it could change or could create more autonomy, more control, more freedom, more influence, more leadership in their part? What are some, some of the things that, that they're lacking that if we gave them that, that information, it can make a difference? That's a great question. So politicians' knowledge of physician and healthcare issues is very variable. There is a bell-shaped curve. On the one extreme, you'll have certain politicians who are physicians, right? There's always a few of those. On the other extreme, you will have people who have no idea, I mean zero. And so it behooves us to always in our mind think, of what are the most significant issues that I need to transmit to every single politician. And then as I present those issues, I can gauge the knowledge level of that politician. And then there's repetition. Mm. So it's, it's very variable. So the people on this call know what the issues are, you know, right? Lost, you've already, I'm not gonna re-articulate them, but the majority of elected officials I will say, do not. As a matter of fact, so I, I had a conversation with, uh, uh, like two weeks ago, I met with um, uh, um, the the, uh, the former governor of Nebraska, Governor Ricketts. Pete Ricketts. Great guy. Great guy. Governor Ricketts, so I, I developed a relationship with him over time. I invited him, but one of our centers is in Omaha. and And I invited him to visit our center. Because again, about precise diagnosis, lowering opioids, which is which is something that you know most people yeah. want to do. He spent an hour and a half at our clinic, him and his security detail. That's it. He asked so many pertinent questions. He was, you know, and so he now and now he's a senator, okay? Because the the senator of Nebraska went, I think he became uh, took a job as president of University of Florida, I'm not sure. That's right. But in the middle of his term, he left. And so yep. the governor of Nebraska, who succeeded Governor Ricketts, because he turned out, appointed Governor Ricketts to be a senator. Yep. So now, uh, senator on interventional pain management. But these relationships don't have, I just didn't pick up the phone and say, uh, can I be connected with Governor Ricketts? I want him to visit our clinic in Omaha. No. It, it's over over a couple of years. I, I'd see him at meetings. He'd know who I was. He then he started remembering my first name and you know what's going on and this and that. So again, the time to develop relationships with these people is anytime you see someone who's a political leader, take that opportunity. Uh, you know, if you have that personality type, to go right to them 
and talk to them. Now, having said that, I want to also mention a little bit about CMS. So CMS is the, you know, the Medicare. So my, when I was in, as a presidential appointee, I dealt with some of them. By and large, these are good people. There's honest people. They are swamped with work. And so they sometimes make decisions that congressmen have no idea. So going back to Governor Ricketts, I mentioned uh, when I met up with him a couple of weeks ago, uh, this time in Washington, I said, hi, you know, congratulations, Senator. Um, uh, I just want to just touch base with you. Uh, there's an issue where, you know, the physicians have gotten a pay cut of 4.2%. That's creating a lot of problems mm -hmm. for private practitioners. And he said, what do you mean they got a pay cut for 4.2% in, in, in this era of inflation? And so, you know, they don't know necessarily what CMS has done. Okay. So please remember you, you, when you talk to these folks, if it's on a national level, you have to make sure that you say who, you know, who in your administration is the contact person who's going to follow through with CMS. That, that just, honestly, it, it shocks me that, that, that something like that's not on their radar. Well, why, 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 why would it be? Why would it be? Where's, where, where's the big pushback from the large groups of physicians doing something about it? That's the whole point. And no, John, right. John shares something very important. Hey, over time, build a relationship with your with your with your local politicians. That doesn't sound like something most people are going to. And I, I love that, John, and I appreciate that. But like how many well-educated doctors working around the clock uh, are, are, are looking and wanting to do that? That's the point. Well, of Doc very, Nation. very few. Very That's few. the point of Doc Nation. And we know that. And quite frankly, we're not asking for that. We're asking to, for you to join this group. So that we can go do those things because we're doing that around the clock. Absolutely, absolutely. With building the Doc Nation brand and those things like that, we want people to be aware of who we are, what we're doing, and and who we're doing it for. And um, please, please set up a meeting, and we'll we'll explain in more detail what it is that we're doing around the clock. I've said it twice now that we're doing work around the clock, and it's. Uh, you know, we provide services. We've had a, a, a business for over 15 years of providing services. That's to that's to work with individual physicians. And yes, we're here to do that. And yes, you can go on the website and see everything that we do. And we feel like we're really good at it. But the big point is, is really to go and become significant lobbyists. That's where we can really make the big splash. That's where we can really make the big difference. Yeah, so Reed, I want to kind of bounce off of you really quick on that because uh, Dr. Prince has said in the beginning um, who advocates and actually who doesn't advocate are those who are kind of locked into being employees of these healthcare systems, right? Um, and so it, it tells me right there um, the voice of physicians maybe gets stronger or a little bit more confidence behind it, um, it when they. Um, are encouraged to hang a shingle. Yeah. You know, you, I think I've I, I, I ranted. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. We, we've spent our entire professional careers uh, focused on the, these things. And, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the last webinar ranting and raving, and maybe it was slightly annoying, but I, I, told, the, I told the group afterwards, I don't care. Like, things need to be done. Changes need to be made. People need, John just said, they don't even know that our politicians don't even know that we got a pay cut. If you right. rattle off, to, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. So, when you when you approach a politician, you have to have in your mind what are the most significant issues, you know, that you're knowledge about because you, you might have just a limited time with them. That's right. Okay? You might you might have 30 seconds. You might want to say, and in that 30 seconds, you say, you know, so and so, this is a big problem, and I know you're busy tonight. Is there someone in your office I should reach out to? And, you know, frequently, uh, you know, they'll give you the name and contact of their chief of service, chief of staff or their their uh, health care advisor, which is where you want to go to. Yeah. So then I write a letter. Why would a politician. The re I mean, it's very clear because now when uh, you have a, a physician who's unable to see especially certain classes of patients because they have to meet their payroll. It's a physician, it's a patient access issue. Okay. So if my pay gets cut 4.2%, no, let me, let me back up. If the reimbursement for my services gets pay cut 4.2%, my actual pay cut 
is several times higher than that, right? Because who's the last person to get paid in a private practice setting? The doctor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Staff salaries have gone up. Supply costs have gone up. They understand that. And so you, you, have, to, you have to just say, the re, I am now no longer going to be able to see these categories of patients because I just can't afford to. It costs me more to see them than I will get paid. So access to care is is uh, what is important uh, yeah. to them. As, and, and, and to some, it might be the, the empirical outrage, as it was with Senator Ricketts, of how could that be with this inflation? You guys are getting a cut. So, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, at least in the meetings I've had and in my experience, it's it's uh, talking about patient access. It's a a great point. I mean, you're you're speaking our language right here. We're all going to be consumers of healthcare, and we all are. Um, patients. That's just, that's know, just it. I, I I can't read all these chats, but I think someone said we're too busy dealing with with something else, and I'm like, that's the point. That's exactly <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. Membership to yeah. Doc Nation uh, is is we we use 100 percent of those dollars to pay lobbyists because you know John. <clears throat> He's kind of a, a diamond in the rough, to be honest with you. He, he, he spent a lot of time working and he's gotten into certain doors and people know him and people will spend time with him. Um, but that's 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 a rarity. We want Doc Nation to spend focused time and energy on on well studied, well documented, well understood doors that we're no longer we're not allowed in. We're going to get in those doors. And so membership to Doc Nation is how we're going to do that. We want to be very focused because I don't expect 150 Johns to pop up out of the out of the ground all of a sudden and join the group. I just don't. I just don't. Now, John, he's on our team, right? And 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 we're going to be working with him uh, going forward. But I'm just you got to tell me more about the specifics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. I'm just I I said it in front of a bunch of people, so you have to make it happen, John. But yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get we'll get you the specifics later. I'm I'm hardcore recruiting right now. Oh, I love that, and so. Membership, very, very important. Um, also, the significant issues. Um, we need to know these, right? Contact us, send those in. Um, but it, it really, really starts with uh, the membership so we can tackle these issues as they come into. We need to know what the issues are. Brom, I got your number. I'll call you next week. I love it when I actually have time to read the chats because <laughs> I, I, I want to chat people. I want, I want people to know. So, John, you talked about donating and contributing to get the attention of these politicians. What is a starting point for something like that? At what point in time do you would you say they they might start paying attention to you at that level? What's been your personal experience with that? If anything, um, well, he said, that? well, the that's a great question that I'm not sure I have the correct answer for. There, so there are, um, there, there, there's, you know, there's the Democratic National Committee, there's a Republican National Committee. The, these all have dollar amount tiers that if you donate, you can attend certain events. There's the Republican Senate Committee, there's the the Democrat Senate Committee also, where you know certain donations allow you to attend certain events with the the these people. Same with the Republican Governors Association, Democratic Governors Association. So, and those are those are you know expensive. Those are uh, you know in the four figures or five figures. Um, individual politicians again if you can make any attempt and and if you can tell them sincerely that I, i'd like to give you more but here's the reality of what's going on i, I think anything is is going to help i mean you you um you know write them a note call them up arrange your meeting let just let them know that you're you're a financial contributor to the best of your abilities yep um and and you know we're all busy as doctors i've, I've just decided see so both my parents were physicians but my grandparents were all farmers okay so i was brought up with a very strong work ethic and and you know you work hard 
you get things done. You're not looking to be, to have a lot of respect. You just you just want to have a, a modicum of respect, yeah. and the respect for physicians is just plummeted right now. And so, since I grew up, as I said, with grandparents who are farmers and parents who are doctors, it bothered me. And so I carved out time that is not compensated to go out and develop these relationships and 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 it, and have continued to do so hey can we read uh there, there's a i think there's a really important question in in the chat and I'd, I'd love for us to read it to john i'd love john to answer it for us can you can you access that neil i can here a question that says not that i'm a fan of ama but isn't lobbying what they do uh, as well as our, our specialty societies everyone so, asking for money sure so um the ama is principally a publishing organization right now. They publish the uh, books that we use for our uh, CPT and ICD-9 coding. I believe right now only 16% of physicians, and that might be lower than that in the United States are members of the AMA, which shocks a lot of people who are not physicians. They thought the AMA was our union. And when I tell them, no, they're a publishing company principally. Now, do they do they do they do they uh, have a voice? One hundred percent, they have a voice. There's no question. Um, you know, but what you know, what are they advocating for? Sometimes it's not advocating for physicians. It's advocating for policy decisions that a majority of the delegates to the AMA vote on that have nothing to do with physicians or patients. Specialty societies are what physicians most uh, frequently are members of. And so that is that is very important for uh, advocacy to be active uh, in your specialty uh, society. As I said, there's uh, when I started, the, there, the organization called the American, it's either the American Academy of Physicians and Surgeons or the American Association of Physicians and Surgeons advocates for the private practitioner. So there are there are these organizations out there, um, and I do contribute to my specialty society organizations. I contribute to my state society, but then I choose to make contributions directly from me to some of the organizations I previously mentioned. And the donation is a small part. Okay, if you make a donation that qualifies you to be invited to a certain meeting, to be most effective. You go to that meeting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who will write a check and the money is important. But if, if you yourself want to have an impact, you have to write the check and go to the meeting. If you, you know, if if you don't want to go to the meeting, that's a separate issue. But for maximum impact, it's it's both of those. Yeah. The AMA, um, at, the, at the end of the day, the AMA has been around for year, years with, I don't know, from what we can see, not a ton of results. Well, I was going to say, not only that, what about the specialty societies, John? What what are the, some of the biggest things you've seen the societies accomplish on a on a leadership influential basis for the individual practitioner in their world? What affects them personally? What are you seeing they've done? What's been the greatest strides they've accomplished? I think the, the greatest thing that has been accomplished is a combination of fundraising, uh, this is no particular order. So in okay. fundraising and then having certain politicians come to the national or regional meetings, uh, again, fundraising for better or worse is one way to get the attention. But, but another way of course, is if you are a voter in that district or you have offices in that district, that gets you in as well. So with the specialty societies, the approach can be fundraising. And then depending on the expertise of the specialty society, it can be the organ organizing um, physicians throughout districts and throughout the country who either have an office or uh, are, are residing there, are voters in that district to go meet with their representatives. And so the concrete results are, you know, if there's issues with 
CPT coding or ICD-10 coding, again, getting that message across, working, making sure that they get CMS involved, Medicare involved too. Gotcha. So doc, doc, this is my, my observation here on this, like the specialty societies, it's, um, this, and why, this is why I love Doc Nation, why I'm spending so much of my time here um, for these issues, but the specialty societies seem very fragmented and sometimes they're even fighting each other. Um, can you can you comment on on what you have seen with that with, with the fragmenting of these societies? Are you suggesting that certain doctors have oversized egos? <laughs> I would never. <laughs> Listen, you everybody on this call knows yeah. that there are certain doctors who have um, egos that are substantial. And, uh, you know, the, it's just a fact of, 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 the, uh, of, of those oversized egos. And, you know, they, they get a leadership position in a certain society and, you know, somebody said something wrong or whatnot. And now they're, you know, they don't want to discuss anything with each other. So um, that's, uh, that's out there. You bet. I, I, I guess I just wanted to bring that because Doc Nation is a place where it can come together. We're all on the same team, right? It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know much about Doc Nation. I mean, I'm honored that you guys invited me. I'm learning more about your organization. It sounds like a fine organization, but, uh, but uh, you, you're absolutely right. There are, you are, Neil, you're correct. There are organizations, you know, there's a joke that, you know, you get two doctors, you're going to get three opinions, right? And um, which was why we were so pleased and, and, and actually a little bit amazed that when we wrote uh, the HHS Best Practices Pain Task Force final report and every single specialty society endorsed those guidelines. Hmm. And again, they're, they're guidelines, they're not standards of how pain should be diagnosed and treated. We were, like I said, extremely happy and uh, a surprise because we do know that, you know, egos do play a role, but um, unfortunately that's the case. But especially societies uh, do have a role uh, and it's it, it's best, of course, if uh, people who are decision makers uh, hear the same message, but we have to be prepared where two specialty societies might give a different message or slightly different message. And then that's where, if you've developed a rapport with certain people, they're going to come to you and say, can you just break this down for me? And, you know, what's really going on here? Yeah. John, do you think the specialty societies are in a position where they can be aggressive enough? I think about their brand and the way that they interact and the things that need to happen. Are they really equipped to be in a place where they can go hard enough and push the envelope enough on the areas and be aggressive enough? It varies from specialty society to specialty society. Some of them, yes, and some of them, no. And it, it has to do with the vision and leadership in that individual specialty society. Yeah. Fair enough. You, you have a, a ton of experience, and I, I thank you for sharing yep. with us. And I, I feel like every single time I talk to you, Dr. Franz, because I learned something. Um, but we, and <laughs> Reed, I'm, I'm telling you from an operational standpoint, I feel this swelling big time that we're going to yep. have um, to field a lot of emails, answer yep. a lot of questions. And yep. um, the truth is the phones are ringing off the hook and, and uh, um, you know, we're doing services through through a company that we've had for for many, many years that's uh, uh, served by Doc Nation. And so service wise we've been there and done that um but doc nation is uh to the public to the public a uh, relatively new idea and so we've spent a ton of time you know uh, john talks about going to your local politician and building those relationships we already knew that needed to happen because this this has been an issue and a pain point to us for going on 10 years now it's actually 10 years this year where this idea came about and so We've put a lot of legwork into building those relationships. We have quite a few of those relationships. We're going to continue to build those. 
Um, but that's where Doc Nation was birthed in that we need groups of people to join us to go expedite this process. Like I said, I don't want this to take 10 years. The group doesn't want it to take 10 years. We're looking at two to three years to make some significant changes, um, if not sooner, but it's going to take uh, people to lock arms together. And that's what we're asking. John, if you can maybe summarize, what are the three things that you think need to change this year in the landscape for everybody who's tuned in? Well, if I'm going to, I'm going to start narrowly and then I'm going to go broad. Okay. And, and, uh, and you guys had asked me to talk about a little bit about DX, TX pain and spine and how, how did we get so successful and have so many doctors pleased? And then I'm going to, I'll go broader on a broader scale. So, you know, there's yep. the, so kind of an analogy, like all politics is local. I don't know if you ever heard that expression, but sure um, so with, with, so DX, TX pain and spine, of which I'm principal and medical director, as Neil said in his introduction, we're, we've grown now to, uh, we're in eight states, we have 50 locations, and last year we had uh, about 275,000 patient visits. And uh, just like in dealing with members who are elected, this just didn't happen, you know, in the last short time period, right? Um, the foundation of our organization is, of course, excellent patient care. But number two, and I, I might even say tied with number one, is respect for the physician. And as I mentioned before, that's in my DNA. And so um, when we are going around the country and we'll, we'll get either like a warm introduction or perhaps I've met someone in a medical meeting that they seem like they're reasonable, we send our team out to do a deep dive, examine the practice. All, all medical practices have problems now. The, the insurance companies have made the regulations so onerous that it's impossible to keep track of everything. It, it, and they've done that on purpose, I think. Yep. So anyway, going back, so we, we find physicians who um, are excellent in what they do. Uh, they're amenable to coaching. I tell them I'm not anybody's boss. Yeah, I'm medical director. Yeah, I'm principal. But I view myself as your coach, not your boss. And my my what what gets me up in the morning is I want to take as many patients from good, or, I'm sorry, many pain physicians from good to great as I can. But as we've discussed in this meeting, there's so many complexities. There's insurance regulation, there's contract negotiation, there's, there's payment strategies, there's staffing, there's patient care, there's medical malpractice. And so um, the physicians that have now joined and, and want to join our organization understand that this is no longer the state of medicine that even existed five or 10 years ago, forget about 15, 20, or 25. Mm -hmm. And so we've created this core based on excellence in diagnosis and treatment of painful conditions, judicious opioid use, um, treating physicians with respect, outreach to government. Okay, that's part of our platform, both local, state and federal. So when I meet with these people, I tell them what we're doing. And so that's on a so that so that has explained our growth that's been extremely rapid. We started when COVID started. So we went from seven offices with the largest practice in Chicago in January of the year COVID started. And we're now during COVID, despite COVID, we've grown to the size we're now. Now taking that to the next step, so that's, so that's just a philosophical approach. So I would advise physicians to a lot who are in private practice to form organizations, form chat groups, get together if you're an independent doctor. And, and uh, because hospital employed physicians, you know, God bless them, nothing against them, but they're always in communication with each other because because that's how it is. So increasing the awareness. So we, uh, we've started a chat group just this week of, of independent physicians. And we're getting signups just in our, our geographic area or where we're at. And so I would suggest that, okay, just start interacting. 
you know, go out, have a social hour with these doctors, learn, learn what these other guys are doing. And it's not that you can only refer to an independent doctor, of course not. But a lot of the independent doctors, they just don't have a mechanism for no, for, for just discussing issues. They, they feel like they're isolated. They don't want to sign a hospital contract because they've heard of the horror stories, but yeah. they don't know what to do. And then, uh, and as we, on a larger level, you know, I'm learning more about your organization, Doc Nation. It seems like a fine organization. I, I want to learn more about it. But then there's the national outreach. So that's with your specialty societies, with Doc Nation, perhaps. And then, and then, but all along, if you, you know, today's topic is, you know, I can talk about a bunch of topics. They were focusing on politics. But if you want to affect change, you have to develop a relationship with the decision maker. Yep. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Prince, that, that's great. And it sounds like you're leading a fine organization. And I, I, I'm thinking I, as from Doc Nation, I would, I would love to have, be able to get all the doctors into situations where like they're aligned with organizations like yours, for sure, help them have a voice. Um, but uh, also, um, through us, like, I read Justin, our one of our signature services is getting people to be able to start a practice as well. Yep. Right? Yep. You want to share a little bit about that? Well, let's just say this. John listed off some things that you can do, right? And he talked about some of the hurdles that you go through in doing certain things. So he listed off malpractice. He listed off a whole bunch of different things. Those are all services that we provide. Right. And so you can sign up and you can you can get a meeting with our team and, and we'll discuss all those with you. Um, but for for today's meeting, I, I, I do want to focus on togetherness coming together. John talked about um, just go out there, reach out, ask. Right. And so Doc Nation is that. So what I would invite our viewers today to do is to send us an email. Uh, book a meeting with us. And, and, and even if you have all your services taken care of, I'll say, hey, this is my specialty. This is what I'm doing. This is the problem that I'm seeing. And this is where I'm at. Do you have any current clients? Mm -hmm. Or do you know of anyone who I could just, even if I had to drive an hour, that I could go have a cup of coffee with? Because part of this is the isolation is just so severe. Part of this is, and we've seen this, we have people calling to talk, to talk about things, right? And we love it. So we're here to discuss those things. We're here to play matchmaker, to build groups. It's not just about Doc Nation. Doc Nation is just the group that's not looking around for anybody else to do anything else anymore. So we want you to be, we want to invite you to be a part of this. Um, and uh, yeah, John, do you have any last words, Neil? I know you're, you're the, you're the host, man. I'll let you do it. Sorry. No, well, I, you, go ahead, John. You, you, first of all, you guys have been very gracious and I really appreciate you inviting me to speak to your organization. It, it, you know, I want to learn more about it. It sounds like you guys are on the right track. Yep. Um, I'm honored to, to have been invited. Um, my, you've hit on some of my passions. So it, it was, it's very easy for me to talk about these. Um, you know, my, my, my most immediate passion right now, and, and for any uh, interventional pain doctors who are in private practice, you know, and to reach out to us at, at DXTX Pain and Spine or look us up on DXTX Pain and Spine dot com um, because this is something I'm passionate about. And if I if 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 at least I can help you, and maybe you guys can help those doctors, would at least be happy to talk to them. And and what we call enhanced private practice, mm -hmm. and that's how we describe ourselves: is we want to maintain physician respect their ability to practice in a private setting, but also, um, again, we're you're, you're much larger than us in scope. We're focusing on interventional pain physicians, but it's on the same track of, of protecting them, their careers, and their patients. Protecting physician respect. What a thing. Um, Dr. Dr. Francis, this is um, honored to call you friend. Thank you for your time and joining us today. Again, I, I learned something um, every single time I talk to you. Uh, we are we at Doc Nation. We are um, we're going to be rooting DXTX on. Um, Thank you. 
And so I already have a couple notes that I, I want to form a partnership because there are quite a few people who we can send your way. That's 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 all. That's all. But there, there, there's a there's a, a group of people we can send your way, John. So I'll be reaching out to you soon. I just like to say this. I'd like to welcome everybody on the screen to join the nation. And if you don't know the details, uh, you sure know how to get a hold of us. And we, we would invite you to do that. Hey, John, thanks so much for your time. We know that uh, it's valuable and we're grateful for that. It's Here been my pleasure. I wish you guys all the success in the world. Thank you. John. Uh, Justin, before we sign off here, I want to, um, what are we looking forward to next month? What do we have there? Yeah, next month, the get ready to hear about what is happening in the financing side of things. There's, there's so much going on in the industry where it's very difficult for doctors to get the capital that they need to expand, to start, to grow. And we have uh, some special guests that are going to be coming to talk to you about what you can do to get lending terms and access to the, the way to get the funding that you need in a favorable manner. And so this is doctor founded, doctor based. And so you are going to be talking to and hearing from peers who saw the problem to get the capital that you may need and they've solved that problem. So they're going to provide some coaching and some guidance on how you can take on the business sector when maybe you've had ideas and you just didn't have the, the confidence or the resources or the, the game plan or, or the knowledge and know-how to do it. Uh, you're going to be hearing from some people who have been there, done that, and have made it possible for you to be able to do the same thing, whether that's on a small scale or a large scale. So we're going to have some fun digging into the problems that have existed for a long time and how the the banking system has been taking advantage of you and has been charging you. The, the, the debt to income ratio factor has been a major problem. Let's and just say this. Banks don't understand how to treat a highly specialized individual who no, clearly no. is committed to paying things back. Yep. They just spent a very long time sitting. The lowest in default rates, like it's unacceptable, the terms that they've been pushing for so long. So without saying you, you, guys are, you guys are giving away too much. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> so, no, hey, 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 real quick, real quick. I, I see some energy over here. I want to see it. You guys are not answering my question here. And and it, guys, I, I got to say, it's going to be difficult to answer every question. But what is what is the question? If someone can help me out here. Where is it? We, we, we do. We do want to. We've run over on time every time. And we we, we do want people to, to say they can sit down and, and get through the whole webinar. Does anybody see it? I'm looking for it. Mind asking the question. Can you repeat the question? Yep, thank you. I'm not seeing it. I do see, let's give them a second. While we wait, I do want to let everyone know that these episodes, these webinars, they are uploaded to our website. Um, if you did not see some of the previous episodes, you can access them there, share them with a friend so they can learn a little bit more about what Dog Nation does. In the Q&A. In the Q&A. I don't see that question unless that unless they came in as, an, as the anonymous attendee. Yeah, let, let's do this. I, I I don't either. I don't I don't see either. But I do, I do know this. Uh, you can sign up to have a meeting with us for free, no charge. Let's let's have a discussion about any questions that may be had. Sounds like sounds, a great way. To, good. Sounds like a great way to sign off. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. We know it's valuable. We appreciate you very much. Thank you for your thank service. You. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your Bye -bye. service.